Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And we have a rare cloudy day here in Arizona. Rain just rolled through, so it's the perfect time to do another product review. I have a handful that I've been using now for the last several months. And in the last video, I promised you guys I'd start rolling them out. Now, this is a newer product from Stellar View. It's something that they've been obsessing over. Vic, the owner, and his crew have been working on for the last two years. And that is a reducer for their larger apochromatic telescopes. Now, for those of you guys that have been in the hobby for a while, you know that these are kind of the holy grail. Like a 130 to 180 millimeter size scope is something that a lot of people really want to get to either at some point or may already own. Now, the benefit of that is, is you get a lot of focal length without all of the hassle that you have with a reflector, worrying about collimation and things like that. They're very sharp, but the downside is they tend to be a little slower. Now I got this SVX 140T specifically because it's at around 960 millimeters at f6.8. So it is a little bit faster than other large APOs who typically are in the f7 all the way up to that f8 to even f8.8 range. So quite a bit slower than this one. Now, one thing that you can do to offset any APO telescope is do a reducer. And now that's pretty simple on a small scope because low focal length, making it fast is not a big deal. It's not hard to correct that amount of light, but taking something this large and correcting it down into a 0.8 reducer is a lot more challenging. And anytime you have high focal length and high speed, it's not only very difficult, it's often very expensive. So for the last couple of years, they have been formulating a million different iterations and they finally got into what they think is a really good full frame reducer. Now the key to full frame is opportunity to get great stars throughout the entire image sensor. The smaller the sensor, the easier it is. With this gigantic 1X field flattener that I got the scope with, as you can see, this thing is absolutely massive. I have a 60 millimeter imaging circle. So it's very forgiving. A full frame sensor is about 44 millimeters meters on diagonal, so I could even go with a medium format or some of the other larger sensors, even above and beyond full frame. But even if you have an APS-C or smaller sensor, it's nice to have a really forgiving scope because you know you're gonna get crisp stars across the entire image. So what's the benefit of having a reducer? Well, first of all, I get a lot wider field of view. So I go from something in close to a thousand millimeters into the 700s, somewhere around 750 or so. And then I go from F6.8 to F5.4, F5.5, somewhere in that neighborhood, depending on the math. And so I not only get more targets that I can go after, but I also get a faster scope. And in this situation, I'm picking up about five minutes on a 10 minute exposure. So what would have been a 10 minute exposure at F6.8 is gonna be like a 15 minute exposure now. So I'm getting about 50 to 60% more light capturing ability. And I'm also getting a more wide field of view. So I can go after things like Andromeda, North America Nebula, Veil Nebula, targets that normally you never think about being able to go after with 140 millimeter APO, but with the full frame sensor and the reducer, I now basically have a wide field that I can get a ton of resolution with, but go after pretty much any of the major targets. Now, obviously for certain things like planetary or really small targets, you do need more focal length than this. And if it's super huge, like maybe you're going for multiple nebula targets, you might need a lens like a 135 or a 200 millimeter. But for the majority of targets that you guys see online, probably 80 to 90% of the common targets with this camera reducer and scope combo, I can go after all of them and get as much resolution and detail as possible because I'm using as much focal length as possible. And now I can do it with a fair amount of speed as well. So the big issue is, can we get corrected stars across the entire image? And that's what we're gonna go inside. I've been able to do several images with not only broadband, but narrowband filters. I'll show you what some of the individual subframe looks like, the stacked frames, and then also the final images. So you guys can get an idea of how well does this work with a full frame camera. And even if you're using like an APS-C or smaller sensor, this is still gonna be great because it's gonna make your APO telescope that much faster and that much wider field. So we are starting to get a couple drops of rain again. So I'm gonna quickly throw the tarp back on, get inside and go over the results that we've gotten thus far. 
So I did want to give a little bit of a history about this process, and this was from Vic, and normally I don't read emails from uh, the owners of companies, but he did say I could quote them. So if you have a reducer for this scope already, they have used companies overseas in the past just to have a generic option so there is one available, knowing that they'd want to come out with their own version and really perfect it down the road. But better to have something than nothing. There are a lot of companies overseas like Hotec, for example, that make these as kind of their main business. So there have been reducers out for the 130 and 140, but now they have a larger three element. There's two fluorophosphate elements for really good color and flat field correction. Um, he does recommend using the 3.5 inch focuser, but there is an adapter for the three inch as well. There is one coming out for the 152 and 180 also. And I did wanna hop really quickly into the website. So what I like about this is one thing that's really kind of confusing about ordering these products is, you know, figuring out the thread size, backspace, all that stuff. You can go ahead and put pretty much anything in there. So I use an M54. You can tell them what focuser you have, whether it's the Moonlight, the Feather Touch, or theirs. And then the back focus required for your specific setup. So the QSI 760 is like 56 millimeters instead of 55 for some reason. So um, I'm able to customize that. And then it does give you all the specs down here. So it does give you what it's gonna reduce the focal length down for both telescopes and give you more information. So again, we're gonna see more of these come out for the other scopes as well. But in the meantime, this these two are very popular scopes, especially for followers of this channel. Since I did a review of the 140, they've sold a lot of them because it is fantastic. So now let's hop into some of those images. All right, so we're inside and I wanted to give a real world example kind of comparing a 90 millimeter, the scope that I started the channel with. We're talking a little guy, you know, 15 pound scope of the Clamshell Nebula and this one's even with its reducer. So it's at 432 millimeters. So we're looking at a 90 millimeter versus a 140. See how much of the clam you can fit. You know, we're basically able to just kind of squeeze it in there. And then if we fast forward to now, we can fit the same amount, if not even a little bit more on the edges with a scope that physically is more than double the size, but from an aperture perspective, uh, about 70 or 80% larger. So it's really cool to be able to use it like a small portable wide field setup, but be able to really just have one scope that can kind of do it all. And then, like I said, outside, if you do want to then put it back at one X and go after some smaller targets, We've got Bodis and the Cigar Nebula. Uh, this is pretty much uh, very little uh, crop, if any, just enough to process. We've got the IFN coming out. So it does a great job really letting you tack any type of targets. And to give you an idea of what that scope would do without the reducer, this is with the 26M camera. So you can see we can just barely get the Pelican in. Um, I really do like this image though, ton of detail, the full resolution, you can really zoom in here and get some awesome stuff because this is at 960 millimeters. But then again, if you're like, hey, I want a bigger chunk, we've got the full Pelican and North American Nebula. The other thing I didn't mention outside is that you do usually sacrifice a little bit of quality with the reducer compared to its 1x flattener. And that's really kind of heartbreaking if you do love the scope at 1x. But with this one, I really haven't noticed a big drop off. As you can see, we have the Andromeda that you saw briefly. And just I want to show you guys, this is actually cropped in quite a bit. Um, let me move me out of the way. So you can see it, it, we do have pretty much the whole thing in there, but I wanted to do a little bit different configuration and go with this vertical kind of diagonal. It gives it a nice 3D feel, but we'll go ahead and take a look at an individual subframe so you can see how much we actually could have fit in. So here's the individual HA subframe. Uh, as you can see, we've got great stars all the way to the corner, but then we are having a lot more room on both sides. So I did want to crop in again, just for effect. And that's kind of the way I wanted to set up the image. But if I wanted to go with a wider view, I would be totally able to. Here's an individual subframe of the clamshell. And then here's an individual subframe of the butterfly nebula. And I want to compare and contrast that one as well. So here is the recent version. And as you can see, guys, the sharpness and clarity is awesome. I really like how this one came out. But if we go back in time, we went after the same image again with that 90 millimeter. As you can see, my processing skills have come a little bit of ways, but not even being able to fit as much as you can see the, the butterfly portion barely fits in there. And so we're, we're really getting more of the field of view than we're used to, even with a scope that's much smaller. Here is another uh, cool composition. 
It's the Lagoon Nebula, and then we have Trifid. And because it is at a higher focal length, we can zoom in and crop in and actually get great high definition images of each nebula individually, even the Trifid. But then we can also get a nice composition of all three targets as well. So guys, hopefully that helps you out. Um, I have, you know, like I said, a handful, uh, all five of these images were done with the reducer. This is just an HOO version of this. It's really just gonna be these handful of images. They do have a lot of hours of integration. So having six images, I thought was a pretty good sample size. Um, like I said, most of them have, you know, probably 17 to, you know, 30 plus hours. And so I really did want to give this a nice thorough review for you guys, show you the individual screenshots of the images as they come in, as well as the final product. So guys, uh, overall, you know, if you have a SVX 130 or 140 and you want to basically kind of have two scopes in one, it's an easy recommendation for me. You're not gonna really sacrifice anything in terms of quality. You're gonna pick up some speed and some focal length. And then again, when we get into the spring next year and galaxy season comes around, or maybe you really wanna zoom into a small nebula, you can just swap back to that one X reducer and you're gonna have great results. So no matter what setup you have, whether it's a smaller sensor camera, larger sensor, monochrome, one shot color, it's gonna give you a lot more flexibility to go after more targets and have more light gathering power uh, for the same amount of time. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. If you do have any questions specifically about Stellar View, feel free to shoot me an email, ryan at darkrangersinc.com. If you do pick one up, please mention the channel. It does help us out. And until the next one, as always, clear skies.